Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So good morning and welcome back to class 6 in total synthesis lecture series and we have been discussing many total synthesis of complex natural products and we will continue our discussion on one more uh, total synthesis of a complex natural product uh, called 4 ball. As you can see from here the structure is uh, quite complex and uh, this was isolated in 1934 from the seeds of purging cotton and it took about uh, another 43 years to determine the correct structure of 4 ball this is which is understandable Co considering the complex uh, structure it took much more time uh, to propose the correct structure of 4 ball and it took another 22 years uh, for the first total synthesis of uh, 4 ball reported by Paul Wender. Basically it has uh, excellent uh, biological activity profile and particularly it uh, helped in the development of uh, many chemotherapeutic agents for cancer and other diseases like AIDS. Okay, so I will not go into the uh, biological profile of uh, this 4 ball esters, rather I will talk more about uh, Wender's total synthesis, retrosynthesis and how he constructed this interesting tetracyclic compound with so many chiral centers. You can see here it is highly congested natural product having many chiral centers. And as I mentioned it took 22 years after the correct structure was proposed for 4 ball uh, to come up with the first total synthesis and his Wenders first total synthesis of 4 ball was started from commercially available simple starting material called perfuryl alcohol. Okay. There are 8 stereogenic centers in the molecule and in that uh, 6 are contiguous. You can see the whole ring here all have stereo centers. So highly contiguous uh, stereo centers and he used a very interesting reaction called oxidopyrrolium arene cycloaddition reaction. Okay, it's a it's sort of 5 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction, oxidopyrrolium alkene cycloaddition reaction. I will come to that when I talk about uh, retrosynthesis as well as uh, synthesis. And this synthesis is a very, very interesting synthesis. And his retrosynthesis, if you look at, he thought 4 ball can be made from this tetracyclic compound by few functional group transformation. First, you know, from here to 4 ball what he has to do is to migrate the double bond from exocyclic to internal. Then he needs to remove the protecting group and oxidize the secondary alcohol in the presence of tertiary alcohol. And here he has to introduce the dimethyl cyclopropane as well as introduce the hydroxyl group. So this functional group transformation though it is written in one step it requires about 10 steps or more to convert into 4 ball. Okay. And here he comes uh, the key oxidopyrrolium alkene cycloaddition reaction. So this is the alkene, okay. this is the alkene and this is the oxidopyrrolium. Okay. This oxidopyrrolium can be made easily from this type of furan with an alcohol here. Okay. So this can be easily made in one step and when it is made and if you have a double bond at appropriate place it can undergo an intramolecular 5 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. We will look into this when we talk about total synthesis and how 
he got this tricyclic compound okay and this can be made from perfural alcohol in few steps okay using standard functional group transformation okay so let us see how he completed the total synthesis of four ball starting from perfural alcohol okay so first he took perfural alcohol and protected the primary alcohol as tbs ether now he deprotonate or lithiated at the other side and quenched with uh, lithium propionate to introduce the propionyl group okay then he carried out an inter intermolecular aldol reaction first you generate the enolate with lithium hexamethyl disulfide and quench with this pentenal okay the pentenal you generate the aldol okay so this is an aldol okay now you protect the hydroxyl group okay you protect the hydroxyl group as acetate then carry out the key reaction that is first you reduce this ketone as i said you need alcohol there for carrying out the key oxido pyrrolium alkene cycloaddition reaction once you have this alcohol treat with mcbba okay the mcbba first it forms epoxide here then it undergoes achmatovich rearrangement okay so this i had already discussed and it when i talked about i think elithrobin i discussed about uh, achmatovich rearrangement so that gives gamma hydroxy pyrano okay then the next key step is the oxido pyrrolium alkene cycloaddition so this on treatment with acetic anhydride okay you protect this lactol as acetate then treat with dbu so the dbu it can form the enolate okay at the same time this lone pair okay this lone pair can push this acetate out okay so if you see this that forms this oxido pyrrolium so this is a stable species okay this is a stable stable species and this double bond can undergo a 5 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction an intramolecular 5 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction so i leave it for some time so that you can visualize okay first it forms this this is what happens now it can undergo cycloaddition like this okay so when that happens you get this product okay it's a tricyclic compound hmm then you get this six membered ring here a five membered ring here and another six membered ring here. while doing that what you can notice is this methyl group occupies the more stable equatorial position and the acetate also the major isomer has acetate in the equatorial position okay so the major isomer upon hydrogenation you can remove the double bond then it is simple we take to get the exocyclic double bond here after getting the exocyclic double bond when you treat with selenium dioxide you can introduce an oxygen functionality okay selenium dioxide is known to undergo allylic oxidation so you get the corresponding allylic alcohol now when you treat with manganese dioxide the manganese dioxides are known to facilitate allylic oxidation to give alpha beta unsaturated ketone then you carry out a 14 addition with vinyl copper okay or you can introduce an allyl group here already a double bond you add a vinyl so it becomes allyl group next to the carbonyl group okay 
then the ketone you can add TMS cyanide basically you are adding a cyanide to the ketone since you are using TMS cyanide the cyanohydrin is in situ protected as TMS ether ok. So, that is how you get the corresponding TMS protected cyanohydrin. So, this can be re rewritten or redrawn like this again I will leave this for few seconds you just see how this was redrawn ok. You can see this CH2O TBS here and this is the 7 membered ring ok. You can see the 7 membered ring ok. Then this oxygen bridge is alpha the oxygen bridge is alpha ok. Then of course, you have the cyclohexyl group with methyl alpha and hydroxyl beta, but both are equatorial ok. Is it clear? Then you treat with dibol. What will dibol do? Dibol will do two things. One, it will reduce the cyanide to aldehyde. Two, it will also reductively remove the acetate group, is not it? Ester will be cleaved. So, you get corresponding hydroxyl group and then cyanide will be reduced to corresponding aldehyde ok. In one, one step you do two things ester is hydrolyzed reductively hydrolyzed and cyanide is reduced to get the corresponding aldehyde. Now, you treat with hydroxylamine to form the oxime. The aldehydes are known to undergo oxime formation upon treatment with hydroxylamine. Then when you treat with hyposolution when you treat with hyposolution this oxime ok this oxime will form a nitrile oxide ok this oxime will form nitrile oxide. Once the nitrile oxide is formed it will undergo an intramolecular dipolar cycloaddition reaction intramolecular 1 3 dipolar cycloaddition or you can call it as intramolecular 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction to give the corresponding 5 membered ring ok. When you get this you have to cleave this NO bond as well as hydrolyze the C double bond N. Both can be done in one step under hydrogen analysis condition. Hydrogen analysis condition NO bond can be cleaved and under the same condition if you use water and acetone the imine the double bond NH which is formed that can be cleaved to get the corresponding ketone ok. So, if you look at this that is how the 5 membered ring the next 5 membered ring was made. Then what is required? You have to protect the hydroxyl groups as benzoate. So, both primary as well as the secondary hydroxyl groups were protected as benzoates. Then if you treat with DBU ok if you treat with DBU then this can undergo elimination ok. This can undergo elimination to give exocyclic double bond ok. The exocyclic double bond particularly when it is in conjugation with ketone they are little unstable. So, once this enone was formed immediately it was reduced under Lucey condition. So, Lucey condition is nothing but you treat with sodium borohydride in the presence of cerium chloride ok. So, that facilitates the 1 2 reduction. So, you got the allylic alcohol once you have the allylic alcohol then you can selectively remove the OTMS in the presence of OTBS ok with the T buff. If you take one equivalent of T buff OTMS will be removed faster than OTBS ok. So, that was done then this is 1 2 diol is not it the 1 2 diol can be protected as acetonide. So, there are many ways one can protect 1 2 diol. So, what vendor used was treat with 2 methoxy propene. So, 2 methoxy propene is this compound. So, treat with 2 methoxy propane, propene in the presence of PPTS you protect the 1 2 diol as acetonide ok. Now, from there what you have to do is you have to reduce the double bond to get the beta methyl and also 
the benzoate should be hydrolyzed and oxidized to ketone. So, this was done in three steps. First, reduce with Wilkinson catalyst so that you get high selectivity, you get the beta methyl. Then, benzoate was removed by reductive removal, Dibol removed the benzoate to get the alcohol, then the alcohol was oxidized with PCC. Okay. So, now you have got the ketone, what is to be done is you know you have to introduce the dimethyl cyclopropane as well as a yeah, hydroxyl group. So, two things have to be done. Uh, so, what you need first you have to introduce the enone, the double bond should be introduced. You treat with LDA and TMS chloride. So, it forms the corresponding enol TMS ether. Okay. It forms the corresponding enol TMS ether. This on treatment with phenyl sulfenyl chloride, you can introduce SPH. Basically, as I said, what you need to do is you need to introduce the double bond next to the ketone. So, there are many methods. So, he used this method. Once you have the SPH, the sulphide, phenyl sulphide should be oxidized. Okay. So, what he did, he treated tetraacetate to introduce the acetate alpha to the sulphur. Okay. This is a famous rearrangement. Okay. Try to find out what is this rearrangement. Okay. Now, you oxidize the sulphide, oxidize the sulphide with MCBBA. Okay. S yes, becomes sulfoxide. The phenyl sulfoxide, if you heat it, it will undergo elimination, thin elimination to introduce the double bond. So, what you have done, if you look at this, from the ketone, not only introduce the double bond, you also introduce an acetate. Okay, you need a hydroxyl group at that position and the double bond is required for introducing the dimethyl cyclopropane. So, both are done using the enol TMS chemistry to introduce a double bond as well as the acetate. Once this is done, then you do the sulfur elide reaction, the sulfur elide reaction to introduce the dimethyl cyclopropane. Okay. So, that is like 1 4 addition and then when it comes back, it will expel diphenyl sulphide. Okay. So, successfully the dimethyl cyclopropane was introduced and it also has the acetate. Now, what you need to do? You have to reduce the ketone and also open this oxygen bridge. Okay. You do not need the oxygen bridge. So, you have to open the oxygen bridge. So, first the ketone was reduced to get the alcohol and when you know when you use dibol, not only the ketone will be reduced, but also the acetate will be reductively removed. Okay. So, you get a syn diol and that was protected as cyclic carbonate. Once you have syn diol, either you can protect it as acetonide or you can protect it as carbonate. Okay. The cyclic carbonate protection was done by treating with carbonyl diimidazole carbonyl diimidazole is a very good reagent for converting on to diol into cyclic carbonates. Then you remove the TBS group. Okay, since there is no other silyl protecting group, it is very easy to remove the TBS group, the TBAF to get the primary alcohol. Next, the major step as I said is to cleave this oxygen bridge because you need a hydroxyl group here. Okay and also you need a double bond here. So, the hydroxyl group was first converted into triflate, then using Finkelstein reaction, the triflate was converted into iodine. So, for opening this oxygen bridge, he treated with tertiary butyl lithium. So, the tertiary butyl lithium what will happen? This will exchange with tertiary butyl lithium to form the corresponding lithium derivative. Then that can open up this bridge to give the exocyclic double bond and the hydroxyl group. Okay. So, that was the idea, but at the same time what happened the tertiary butyl lithium added to the cyclic carbonate also. Okay. It added and he got this 
S star. Okay. Next step, the hydroxyl group you need beta. So, you have to invert that either one can do a Mitsunov reaction or you can oxidize and reduce it. So, Wender followed the second method that is you oxidize the secondary alcohol with PCC to get uh, the ketone then you reduce with bulky reagent sodium triacetoxy borohydride. Okay. So, you get the required beta alcohol then reduce with dibol, okay. uh, reduce with dibol again the pi valyl group was reductively cleaved to get the corresponding dial. Okay. Now, both alcohols the secondary, secondary and tertiary were protected as benzoate, okay, were protected as benzoate and this hydroxyl group okay, which is sterically little bit crowded was not protected. Then this exocyclic double bond, this exocyclic double bond first it has to go inside. So, for that what he did was he did allylic oxidation with selenium dioxide, catalytic amount of selenium dioxide in the presence of more than stoichiometric amount of tertiary butyl hydroperoxide to get the allylic alcohol. Now, the double bond migration, oxidative transposition, the double bond migration was done by treating with thionyl chloride, thionyl chloride and propylene epoxide. So, the double bond migration took place as well as the hydroxyl group was converted into the chloride. Okay, it is a SN2 prime reaction. Then the chloride was treated with silver benzoate, silver benzoate it is a typical SN2 reaction and the chloride was replaced by O benzoate and again now you have introduced the benzoate here already there are two benzoates. So, what we need to do is after protecting these three hydroxyl group now we have to remove the astronide here and oxidize the secondary alcohol okay, keeping the tertiary alcohol. So, the astronide was cleaved using perchloric acid to get the diol. Once you have the diol as you can see here one is secondary alcohol other one is tertiary alcohol. Secondary alcohol can be easily oxidized. So, what he has done is he has treated with SO3 pyridine and DMS, DMSO to get the ketone. Now, the next step is to introduce the double bond here. Okay. So, for that he has to protect the tertiary alcohol. So, that was protected as TMS ether. Then you generate the enolate. Okay. So, the enolate was generated and quenched with TMS chloride to get the corresponding enol TMS ether. Once you have the enol TMS ether, you can brominate. Okay, if you treat with NBS, you get the alpha bromo ketone. Once you have alpha bromo ketone, then elimination of HBr is possible and that was done with lithium bromide, lithium carbonate and the high temperature elimination takes place to introduce the double bond. Okay. So, now if you look at the structure it has almost all the functional groups in correct place. So, what you needs to do you have to remove the TMS group to get the tertiary alcohol then the three benzoates three benzoates should be removed. So, that was done with potassium cyanide and methanol that underwent clean hydrolysis of benzoate to give the four ball. The four ball synthesis was one of the classical total synthesis accomplished in 80s. And once you have this of course, the primary hydroxyl group can be easily treated with various carboxylic acid or functionalized carboxylic acid to form many esters. That is how the structural activity relationship studies on four ball esters were done for medicinal chemistry. So, if you look at the total synthesis of Bender, so he has used a very important key reaction 1 Achmatovich rearrangement 2 the oxidopyrillium alkene cycloaddition. Okay. Then he also used a very interesting opening of the oxygen bridge using tertiary butyl lithium 
the number of steps involved in the synthesis of four ball is uh, reasonably high but considering the complexity one should understand that it is not easy to accomplish the total synthesis of four ball without taking too many steps so the total number of steps involved in the synthesis of four ball was 53 with an overall yield of point close to point 2 percent okay nevertheless this was the first total synthesis of four ball of course there are other synthesis later and um, with this we complete the total synthesis of some complex natural products we will continue our discussion on synthesis of some more complex natural products in the next few lectures okay thank you